Let's see here. Relationships in Revelation Online are complex from finding your soulmates to getting into turf fours. Uh, plenty of occasions to display your intentions. Oh, my intentions. Okay, all right. Both bad and good. Oh, shit. My intentions are always good. You know what I mean, man? Come on now. <laughs> What's going on guys? This is the One Man Army of Mr. Easy for Life. Welcome back to another Revelation Online discussion video. I got another topic for you guys that I wanted to discuss. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with this right now. I'm on their website here, man. I'm doing a little bit of research and I was, uh, I came across a topic that really piqued my interest. I wanted to go ahead and do a little bit of discussion with you guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of reading here. It says uh, some gear class restrictions, and basically, uh, this is just telling you what, what kind of gear that uh, the classes wear, as well as the weapons that they wear. So it goes on to say that uh, Spirit Shapers uh, wear... Uh, oh wait, Sword Mages and Spirit Shapers wear cloth, and Gunslingers and Occultists wear uh, some leather armor, as well as Vanguards and Blade Masters wear plate armor, right? So it's, it's just telling you that uh, the different kinds of armors that you're going to be finding and the uh, what classes uh, wear what. And the uh, same thing goes on with the weapons. Gunslingers can only use snipers and Spirit Shapers can only use uh, magical bells, I guess. And uh, yeah, so a little bit of... I guess that's like the introduction to, to the kind of gear that they're going to be talking to you about. Alright, so as you scroll down here, it goes on to say a little bit about the item quality levels. I don't want to waste too much of your time here, uh, so I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. Basically, the, for the gist of this is that they're telling us that there are different kinds of quality items. We got your gray, your, qua your, your green, your blue, your violet, and your gold. Uh, you know, green being the item quality that is like common or whatever you see all the time by killing monsters, uh, open world open world bosses, or no, not open world bosses, uh, killing monsters in the open world, sorry, uh, and doing some dungeons or whatnot. Your blues, however, you're going to be getting that through completing certain quests, and your purples, which is your epics, are pretty much an item that's uh, that you can earn by doing dungeons or raids or killing uh, world bosses, right? Now, you can also purchase these items in the city for reputation, honor points, and or order of the guardian reputation points so that's pretty cool so like with uh that's a pretty tr standard traditional mmo feel in my opinion that uh you know when you when you're gonna go ahead and get some uh purple epic quality items you can go ahead and do some dailies for some honor points and you can exchange them uh for some uh epic you know epic pieces of gear uh through npcs right pretty much i'm i'm, I'm guessing they're gonna be like dailies and they will reward you with honor points or reputation points. You can go and exchange that. Um, I'm guessing in a town for at an NPC for some uh, some nice epic gear, which is pretty standard in these MMOs or whatever, which is awesome. Now it goes on to say something a little bit interesting, and this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. It says here that the most valuable gear in the game is obviously the gold tier. That's the legendary. Uh, and it can be attained through honor points. So same thing like your epic gear. You can use your honor points to exchange... Um, exchange honor points for a little bit of some legendary tier armor, right? Uh, once, if your character has also achieved the rep required PvP rank and or the Order of the Guardian reputation points, so if you're the kind of person who likes the PvP a lot, they're going to be rewarding you as well. You can use that, uh, depending on your rank, you can get a, you can get some nice uh, legendary quality gear through your PvP rank, which is pretty awesome. If That's pretty much what I'm hearing. And uh, it says here that you also have to create the very best gear for yourself. Now, I don't know if you know this, but as I was reading this, I noticed, or and doing some research, sorry, doing some research in general about the game, you're going to tend to notice, or at least I've noticed, uh, that this game is really tailored to creating the perfect tune. You know what I mean? Uh, in terms of stat rolls and uh, pretty much the kinds of gear that you pick up, right? So they're pretty much saying this, that... You have to create the best gear for yourself, right? And you can obtain your first set of armor at level 37. Now, they didn't say this, but I'm assuming that you could actually obtain your first set of legendary quality gear at level 37. Now, I do believe that the level cap is... I want to say 70? I don't know. That's that's this thing I don't know yet. You guys got to let me know uh, what the endgame uh, level cap is as of right now in China. 
Because every time I watch a video, a Revelation video, they're always like level 70 or whatever when they're doing the race. So that's just what I assume is level 70. But they're saying here that once you get to level 37, you can actually get a set of legendary uh, quality gear, which is awesome, right? So after completing a special main storyline quest or collecting some or buying resources on the auction house probably uh you can actually create higher stats than uh oh wait the items that are created which is i'm guessing like your crafted gear or whatever uh they have higher stats than regular golden items so they there's where there's this is what i'm pretty much saying here it says regular golden god damn it i can't highlight golden items right you see that now what does that mean there? I think from what I'm hearing here and what I'm reading is your crafted gear is actually going to have better stats than the gear you find through bosses and whatnot. And I think this is actually kind of interesting because then it leads us to the question of how are we going to get it? Okay, now it says that it's going to be craftable, meaning that well, we have to pick a profession that's going to lead us to crafting our legendary tier quality. Or is it going to be a profession that we get by doing the storyline quest, the quest line, and we'll have it next to our other professions that we choose, right? Because usually in these MMOs, you, you get to pick and choose uh, what you want as a profession. But what I'm thinking here is maybe, just maybe, at around level 37, when you finish a storyline or a main storyline quest, it'll give you like a, a maybe like a profession that allows you to craft, be able to craft these uh, legendary tier qualities from level 37 up to uh, the uh, um, you know level cap level 70 which I think is pretty awesome and it, like I said it goes on to say that this crafted gear is gonna be better than the legendary gear that you find off the ground or off of world bosses or raids I think that's pretty awesome I really do because then it's like you don't really have to battle against RNG cross your fingers and hope that and pray that you get a legendary uh, from like raids or something like that because technically speaking from what I'm hearing you could actually just craft it and it'll be like the best gear in the game because that's what it's pretty much what it's saying um, so I think that makes that's gonna make a lot of people happy there uh, because it's like depending on how much you put your effort into this game will depend on how much your gear is you're not gonna be battling out battling it out too much in terms of RNG drops or something like that when you can just make it which is pretty cool um, it goes on to say that the gold items created is the most powerful in the game, right, of course. And improving them provides more opportunities to perfect them, okay. And what they mean by opportunities is that it goes on to say that the items that you obtain through the raids, the end game raids, are going to be used as resources uh, for your legendary tier gear that you crafted in order to perfect them. As you can see, we got a picture down here, and I'm guessing... If we can go ahead and load this up here, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I can zoom in. Uh, I think that's the biggest I can make it. Um, that you can actually see that there's a bit of a legendary, there's a legendary chess piece. I'm assuming right here, surrounded with a upgrade table. I'm pretty sure that's what the upgrade table looks like. And uh, you got some epic quality purple gear right here. Maybe these are resources or gear in general. And then you got these other re legendary resources that you're probably going to be collecting through various different ways. Uh, then you're going to combine it all together to, you know, pretty much upgrade your crafted legendary gear to perfect it, like it was saying. So that's pretty cool. I think that's but I think that's pretty fucking awesome to be honest with you. It's something that I haven't actually seen uh, in an MMO before, saying that the gear that you make will be the best gear in the game. It's usually the opposite. The gear that you find will be the best gear in the game. And I think this is something that's a little bit more innovative. I think it's something that will make a lot of people more happy, like I said, because depending on how much effort you put into upgrading your gear will depend on how good of a character your tune is. I guess you could say. It goes on to say uh, a little bit about the item stats, and this is pretty much relating to the picture that we have up here. It says here that um, pretty much characters have basic stats, right? You get your strength, your stamina, your energy, your agility, and your intellect with uh, 33 secondary parameters. For example, the chances to inflict critical damage or the chances to dodge enemy attacks, resistance to physical damage, and so forth. Gear can also provide bonuses, all right? So you got bonuses, set, set bonus stats, which is pretty cool, to any stats and parameters selected and well-directed gear improvement along with the opportunity to change secondary parameters will ensure you that you can fine-tune your character. So I'm guessing you can probably like 
re-roll it or something like that maybe re-roll your stats I don't know see this is information that's new to me you guys gotta let me know if those of you actually played the game I know what gearing is like go ahead and let us know in the comment section below man share your knowledge with the people man um, but this is just an ability to fine-tune your character in terms of stats right it says that Revelation Online offers the flexibility in that the resources needed to boost your gear can also be obtained in different ways so I guess that's like I said, with the, the mats up here, you know, yeah, this looks like raid gear, but I'm thinking with these other resources right here, it says that it's going to be obtained through maybe dungeons, open world, uh, through completing quests, or even buying it with reputation or your currency, which is pretty cool, right? So I'm guessing as long as you just play the game, you're going to be able to have an ability to buy resources to upgrade your crafted gear, which is great. So there's going to be many different ways that you can pretty much revamp your stats in terms of when you upgrade your uh, your legendary crafted gear now it goes on to also say that random stats for your created items so I'm guessing that every time you craft a gear piece uh, including legendary I'm thinking that it's gonna be at random stats the rolls that you get um, your gear will reveal uh, several or receive several stats blue stats and fixed green random stats um, so the fix, fixed green random stats can offer from like you can have from one to three random green stats and the size of the bonus is determined at random okay so this is like the whole MMO RNG traditional you know battling it out with RNG in terms of your gear I guess you know I guess that's the one thing it's like it's one thing to create your gear but it's another thing to fine-tune your stats uh, when you do this now it says here that you can also spend resources in order to change your green item stats um, in a limited amount of time so as long as you get the resources you can keep re-rolling your stats right and it says here that when to do that all the previous indicators including the blue stats will also be reset so once you re-roll your stats you will be pretty much getting a brand new set of stats on that piece of gear that you crafted which is also pretty cool like I said it's the whole notion of you gotta battle it out with RNG sometime and you know and it's like like I said it's one thing to create the gear but it's another thing to actually get the stats that you want and I think that's another reason why people go into raids uh, multiple times after they get the gear maybe they're not satisfied with the stats that they have so they have to go back in there and re-roll it now with this game it seems as though that it gives us another reason to go back into the raids because it's like if you want to create a better set of legendary gear you have to go back into the raids and uh, pretty much collect the end game raid gear or items or whatever and use it as resources you know I think that's pretty amazing I really do think that's pretty innovative in a certain way that you know the whole reason why people go into raids is to basically get the the raid gear or get the end game gear and then that's pretty much it that's the end of their journey they're satisfied once they have the, the correct roles with it uh, they could pretty much stop I guess but with this game it's like you're gonna be able to have a full set of legendary gear that's what it's saying here I mean that's what I'm hearing I could be wrong by the time you reach the end game cap if you craft them right but you also need to go into the raid it gives this like I said it gives you another reason to go into the raids because you need those raid tier pieces as resources in order to improve and fine-tune your crafted gear um, you know why I think this is so amazing is because I mean I've never actually seen an MMO where the crafted gear is better than the the gear that you find off the off bosses or off uh, reputation exchanges or something like that or uh, just as a reward in general you know what I mean and like I said I think this is gonna create a lot of happiness for people or make a lot of people happy in the community because it's like you don't have to cross your fingers and hopes for a legendary uh, in the raid when you could just craft it and it will be it'll be end up being better than the legendary gear that will probably drop uh, in the raids themselves so yeah you know like I said I mean I'm not saying that the raid gear is actually bad you could actually probably use them as placeholders until you craft your legendary piece for that slot and then you you know you could pretty much use uh, that that placeholder as resources as well you know cuz I'm guessing that the raid gear is gonna be pretty damn good but I guess this is just a way for them to say that uh, if you want the best gear you have to craft it and you have to fine-tune it one thing I've learned from Revelation online is that you actually need to there's a lot of fine-tuning okay and it's it's really designed for the player to mix and match and mess around with your character stats to create whatever you want in terms of tailoring that character to a specific stat you know what I mean with the whole skill points or whatever turning a tank class into a DPS class you know is one thing and 
whatnot, turning a healer class into a DPS class. You know, I think that's something that's really, really appealing to the uh, the whole revelation aspect. Uh, and it's really appealing to the eye for these gamers out here and, and just the, com the MMO community in general. You know, there's a lot of things that, like I said, Revelation Online is bringing to the table. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about this whole gearing stat thing uh, because this is something that I've actually never seen. It's I've, I, th I think it's awesome. I really do. You know, being able to rock legendary gear from 37 on is fucking amazing. You feel like such a badass while you're leveling up and... You know, you don't really have to walk around in shit gear in general, you know what I mean? And of course, you're, there's always a room There's always room for improvement in that kind of thing. And uh, I just, I, I really appreciate that. I really do appreciate the fact that they've made something like this, you know? Because now I could go into Revelation thinking that, well, great, it's going to take an eternity just to get one Legendary. When I could, just by playing the game in general, be able to craft it at such an early level. Uh, through questing and whatnot, and just saving up my resources, and just playing the game in general will get you a nice set of legendary gear. Now, I could be wrong about this. I really could be wrong about this, but from what I'm reading, I, I'm thinking this is how it's going to turn out. And whether or not you think it's a grind fest, I think it's something that's fucking amazing. You know what I mean? And, you know, to end us all off in conclusion, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. You know, I really do. Is this something that you've always wanted? Is this something that's pretty creative? Is this something that's innovative? Do you think this is awesome that uh, the crafted gear is going to be better than the gear that drops off of bosses and whatnot? Do you like the fact that you're going to be able to fine-tune your item stats and re-roll them as many times as you want to get that perfect tune? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below, guys. I can't wait to hear what you have to say uh, about this whole gearing system in general. I think it's awesome. Uh, like I said, I've never seen a game, an MMO, where the crafted gear out, out item levels the, uh, the raid gear. Or even uses raid gear as resources in general. Like I said, usually when you get the raid gear, that's the end of the journey for the most part, right? But uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. That's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Uh, stay tuned for more Revelation Online content to come your way. CBT comes out this month. And uh, we got to get this hype going, man. I want to see all you guys on the same, uh, the same server as me. I really do. I got to go ahead and pick my server here. And uh, like I said... CBT is coming. It's going to be a good time. I went ahead and picked up a Founders Pack, so I'm getting guaranteed access uh, to all the CBTs. And I encourage you to at least pick up that eight, that $17.99 Founders Pack so you can go ahead and get a taste of CBT as well, right? Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Of you. What do you think of this gearing system in general? I hope you like the, uh, the whole PvE footage you saw right above uh, the screen I'm looking at. Uh, and uh, yeah guys, like I said, let me know what your thoughts and opinions about the gearing system in general. If there's anything that I maybe misread or anything that I, that I could be wrong about uh, in terms of information that we discussed today, go ahead and throw it in the comment section below and let me know. Please correct me because I want to learn and I want to do I want to know as much information, correct information uh, as possible since the fact that this information on the website, I would say it's pretty much a tease. It really is a tease. We're not really, we're not really going to know the full extent of the experience until we actually play the game. But those of you I know who have played it, go ahead and let me know what the gearing system is like uh, in the Chinese version or whatever. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more content coming your way. Uh, more announcements soon in terms of live streaming. I got my schedule up. I'm going to go ahead and reveal it uh, next time. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you all as always. Stay tuned for more videos to come your way. And this has been the One Man Army Mysteries for Life. I can't wait to hear what you say in the comment section below. And I'm out. Peace.